This is the video for the Towers game. Here in the blue instruction box we see it says, Minimize the tower cost while satisfying the four requirements. And here it lists the four requirements. First of all, ground clearance. The red wire cannot touch the black ground. Failure, white dots on the red wire. Well, here we see between this tower and this tower, the red wire hits the ground, and there we see the white dots. Next it says the span. There cannot be more than 2,200 feet between the towers. Failure means no solution shown. Well, I'm going to remove this tower to show you what happens. Look, there is no solution now because the wire can't reach from the first tower here to this tower. We have to put the other tower back. Next, it says the load. There's a maximum load for each tower. Failure means a black circle at the top of the tower. Here we see a tower with a black circle on top of it. That means the weight of the wire here is too heavy for this height of tower. And here we see it has to hold the weight from this point here all the way over to this point here. It has too much load on that tower, so it has the black circle. Next, the lift. There is a minimum load, 150 feet on each side of a tower. Failure means a green circle at the top of the tower. Here we see a tower with a green circle on top of it. You can see the span of the wire from this tower down to this one is actually pulling up on this tower. But we know it needs 150 feet of load on each side of it. Well, this tower doesn't have any load on the left side of it. There are 100 games, 0 to 99. I've already clicked on the 0 here so that it will become uh, active. That is, the cursor is there. We could change the number now. Well, now I'm going to click on Next to see the next instructions. In the brown box at the upper right is a list of the height span, load, and cost of the eight towers. Well, here we see the brown box for the towers. We see the height goes from 30 feet to 100 feet. We see that the span is the same for all of them, 2,200 feet. We see, though, that the load increases with their height. A 30-foot tower, 800 is the load capability and for the 100 foot tower 1500 feet of load. All right. The ground clearance for the wire is 50 feet. That was subtracted from the height of each tower. Notice here it says that the first tower is 30 feet. It actually is 80 feet high. But we subtract off the 50 foot clearance so that we can actually see the wire going down underground here. All right, next. The span for a tower is the distance between the previous tower and the following tower. Well, like for the first one here, it goes from this tower to that tower. The low for a tower is the distance between the wire's lowest points before and after the tower. We'll go on. At the middle right is an example of measuring the span and load of a tower. Right here, it's working on this particular tower here in the center, and it says its span is from the, this tower to that tower. That is, the previous to the following. 
but the load on this tower is from the lowest point of the curve before it to the one after it. That is where how the load is calculated. There are 200 positions for a tower left to right. Click on the position where you want to place a tower. Well, here we see from left to right, it says there's 200 different places where a tower can be placed. For instance, I can click here, and now there's a tower there. I click there again, though, and it takes it away. We go to the next note. If a tower is already there, it will be removed. We just saw that. When a tower is placed, nearby towers are removed. Oh, so if I would place a tower close to this tower, like right here, it knows that you want this other tower removed because they're too close by each other. I'll put that tower back by clicking back on that position. To change the height of a tower, click on the tower's position till it is light blue in color. Then it says that means it's the active tower. Well, we see that this tower we've been working on is light blue. So, it says, then click on the height you want in the brown box. Well, we saw the brown box here. Shorter towers cost less, but are weaker. Well, we highlighted this tower. Let's change its height. Right now, I believe it's 100 tall. Let's make it 30 tall. Oh, look, when it's 30 tall, the short tower can't hold the load. Well, we'll put it back to 100. Now it can take the load. If the testing solution does not meet the four requirements, the test cost will be red highlighted. Notice our test cost has always been red highlighted because we have all these failures of the requirements. You can view the dynamic programming solution by clicking on the green box middle left. Alright, here's the middle left, there's the green box. It says I can click it for the dynamic programming solution. So I'm going to ask for its solution. Alright, here is the solution for this problem given the dynamic programming procedure. Notice it uses short towers it often has the wire very close to the ground. Many of these points you see it's wow, it's almost touching the ground, but it doesn't touch the ground. This solution was obtained using dynamic programming, which means that first it found all the possible solutions for each of the 200 towers and then used the best it could find. Then you can click on the green box again to return to the testing solution. I'll click on it again. And now we go back to the testing solution where you get to see what you can do. Try and see if you can do better than the dynamic programming cost of 23920 All right. This is the information about the game. Now I'm going to click on program in the red stripe to see the programs for the towers game. First we see here, and I'll click the, for the main program. This is the main program of the towers. It says over here it has the main program plus two sub-programs. One, I'll click on the dynamic programming solution, sub-program number one, and it also has a the test solution sub-program where it does the testing. Up here at the top, we could click 
execute the application, which will take us back to the game. Save the application, create a new application, create a new subprogram. I had another one down here. And we have other ways here of copying instructions from other programs or within this program. Down below in these brown boxes, we have tools that can be used when creating programs. Here, make comments, list values, and show page text, put names to different things. And we have like things that show you about ASCII and how to make colors, how to make patterns and sounds and font sizes. These are tools for programming. Below that, we see down here, it says build an app. There are YouTube videos that will show you how to go start from creating to making an HTML file for a P-code app. Below there, there's an application that will allow you to see how the different actions work in this P-code. Over here, under the label Actions, it shows the actions used in this program. Then below that, there's a list of HTML5 YouTube videos about instructions, registers, how to find and replace things, build patterns, and so forth. All more information, videos on the P code. I'm going to click on Execute the Application. We go back to the game. Here we see below the game Start App. If you change this Towers app, you can save it to one of these places A through T. Then when you come here, you can run it. It will be stored on the hard drive of your computer in what they call local storage. So you can change this and then save it. And you can play it the way you want to play it. You could change the costs and such. Below that, there's a list of HTML5 P-Code apps like the Bakery, Blackjack, Box Delivery, Colorful, Craps, and so forth. All right. This is the end of the video on towers.